So, if you're a game designer, you know that, in games, something essential is the feedback that you give your players. This feedback is all the little sounds, NPC reactions, visual indicators, and other elements that you use to acknowledge the player's inputs, and ensure that they know the game indeed noticed them. This can be particularly important when you need to load data, cause this loading phase can typically vary in duration, and so you kinda need to tell your players if they're not waiting for nothing. Now, of course, for game levels, this is often done via loading screens, and that's definitely a super interesting topic that I'd love to talk about. So if you want to learn more about loading screens in Godot, tell me in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to make a video on that topic. But today, I want to talk about something else. I want to show you how we can create a little set of loading spinners for more modern or meta game interfaces. And yeah, if you're not too familiar, those loading visuals can actually take a lot of shapes and move in a lot of different sketchy ways, as demonstrated by the amazing CSS Loader Online database. So that's the kind of thing that we're going to learn how to make today. Oh, and by the way, if you want to get all of those Godot loading UI elements, with even some easy-to-tweak in-editor customization options, they're now available on my Patreon to all Line and Square members, like René Hitzke. So if you're interested, feel free to have a look over here. Okay, to begin with, let's see how we can create this super simple loading visual with three horizontal dots appearing and disappearing at given intervals. To do that, all we need is an animation player node. This built-in Godot node is a very powerful tool that can animate virtually any property on any node in the scene, and the idea is just to define keyframes, meaning specific values for specific properties at specific times, and then you let the engine interpolate between those keyframes to compute all the intermediary values for these animated properties. For example, here, suppose that we have an HBox container with three texture rect nodes inside that each show a circle. Now, if we create an animation player node, you see that we get this new panel at the bottom to edit the animations inside this player and the keyframes inside these animations. So let's say that we create a new animation called Idle, and we click on this button to have it autoplay when the scene is instantiated, and this other button to have it loop indefinitely. The next step is to actually define our keyframes. To do that, we simply need to make sure the panel is active at the bottom, and then select the object we want to animate, typically here or first texture rect on the left. You see that now, in the inspector, we've got little key icons on the right of every property, and so all we have to do to keyframe them is click on this icon to create a new keyframe at the time currently marked in our animation editor. To do our loading visual effect, we can play with the modulate parameter of our node, and more precisely the alpha value of this color. So first, we're going to make it fully transparent by reducing the alpha to zero, and press the key icon on the right. Godot asks us if we want to auto-create a reset track. Let's say yes. In short, this reset animation is just a fake animation that you can use to quickly set all the keyframe properties back to some default value. But anyway, you see that we now have this keyframe at the beginning of our idle anim for the modulate property of our first texture rect. The next step is to move our time marker, for example, to 0.5 seconds, update our property by resetting the alpha to 1, and re-clicking the key icon to add a new keyframe. You'll notice that in the animation panel, we now have two keyframes, and the engine even shows us how it will interpolate between them, with the opacity growing steadily from 0 to 1 over half a second. Finally, to make sure our animation loops properly, we just need to go to the end of the animation, at 1 second, and again keyframe our alpha at 0. And there we go! If we play our animation now, with this button, we see that the first dot fades in and out at regular intervals, as expected. We can of course redo exactly the same thing for our two other texture rects, to have those three dots pulse over 1 second, like this. Then, to really get the cascading effect we want, we can select the keyframes of the second and third texture rect, and offset them on the right, like this. Though, if you move them and then you try to replay the animation, you'll see that the time marker never actually goes out of this highlighted area, and so it doesn't really reach those final keyframes. That's because, for now, our idle animation only lasts one second, so we can't actually play keyframes after that. To extend it, we need to change its length with this input in the top right corner. 
And here we are. You see that we've now successfully created our very first loading visual. Another typical loading indicator is an endless rotating spinner like this one. This time we can take advantage of another readily available Godot tool, the Texture Progress Bar node. Because if you take a look at the parameters on this node, you'll notice that it supports a clockwise fill, meaning that we can have a texture gradually show with an increasing angle as the progress value changes. So now let's say that we have a texture like this ring. Then if we assign it in the progress texture slot of the node, you see that when we adjust our value up or down, we get a smaller or bigger portion of this ring. Which means that we can adjust it to some arbitrary fixed percentage, for example 25 or 30, to get a thick arc, and then we can once again use an animation player node to have it rotate endlessly. Here I've again set the animation to autoplay and to loop, and the property I'm keyframing is the texture progress bar node rotation parameter from 0 to 360 degrees. However, at the moment, you see that this spinner goes a bit crazy, because it's actually not rotating around the correct pivot point. To fix this, we need to change the pivot offset of our texture progress bar control node and set it to be half the size of the element. And that's it! We've now got a simple loading spinning indicator, which we could even turn into other famous visuals, simply by using other textures in the node's progress property. To go a bit further with our animations, let's see a third common type of loading indicators, stretching or moving bars that pulse or translate at some given rate. Now, all in all, this is doable with the same animation player and hbox container tools as we did before for the dots. But it's a nice opportunity to point out something important about those Godot container nodes, which is that because they auto-size their direct children, they can sometimes get a bit in the way when trying to create an animation. Indeed, here, if we really want to offset or scale our bars, we need to do a little hack and add an intermediate empty control between the hbox and the actual visual. Then, by using the full rect anchor mode on the color rect inside, we can have the container auto place the controls in a row and the visuals inside responsively fill those controls, but while keeping those transforms trickable and animatable. Meaning that now we can create various animations for those color rect elements by changing their position or their scale and their pivot offsets to have them stretch and squeeze or move like a wave or any other idea that strikes your fancy. Okay, so remember the basic three dots indicator we worked on in the first section? Well, we can actually create a few variations super easily just by playing a bit with our animation options. First of all, if we click on this button on the far right of any of our track, you see that we can set the interpolation mode to either the default linear mode, a nearest discrete mode, or a cubic mode. By playing around with those values, and by moving the keyframes to change the cascade overlaps, you can quickly get other nice effects without having to change anything else in the scene. Another thing we could do is have the modulate property be different for each dot, and even change color as well as opacity over time, for example, like this. Or if you want, you can even go further and have the dots appear and disappear by growing and shrinking instead of fading in and out. Similarly, we can re-update our bar concept to instead have a sort of plane that flattens along a direction to simulate a 3D flipping movement, or to create some flashy color switching. Or we could use an animation player to play with both the opacity and the scale of a loader and get this kind of pulsating halo around it. Or we could use one to discreetly swap between shapes and get a more 8-bit arcade vibe visual. Well, I think you're starting to see that there's a virtually infinite number of variations on those basic ideas and that there are many ways of making player feedback entertaining and fitting your own game aesthetic. But tell me, are there any specific loading effects you'd like me to talk about, or other kind of basic reusable components like this that you'd like to learn more about in Godot? Again, don't forget that you can get all those demos and assets plus a few extra tools on my Patreon, so feel free to have a look. And if you want to learn how to make really good UIs in Godot, then you might want to check out this other video I published recently. But yeah, in any case, feel free to react in the comments down below. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.